Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about thread control and how to uh, have a better management of your thread and how to use it better when tying your flies which will uh, greatly improve your tying and make it easier for you and your flies will look better for sure. So uh, for a start I'm going to use the thread that's too thick for, for this fly. Well, I'm not going to tie fly immediately, but I'm going to show you some uh, tips. Uh, and that's why I'm using this too thick thread. So, first things first, let me start by just putting the hooking device, as you can see, and then starting the thread. So, you can use the single, single wrap. It means that, like, when you fold your thread like this, you start immediately going backwards overlapping uh, your thread so use this tag end to slide down your thread and to make those nice tight turns now let me do that again so take piece of thread in your thumb and forefinger of your left hand or non-dominant hand so make everything by an angle for example like this and then make start it like this after a few turns it's already tight keep constant tension and you'll have perfect start if this is too complicated you can choose to go one two reps forward towards the eye and then just overlap backwards and start your fly same thing do whatever suits you the best now because not all the threads are built like this. These have parallel strands, they're not uh, braided. Uh, some threads, like, such as this one, this is Vivus 6 Oath, so it's a rather thicker one. Uh, it has two strands that are spun together, and these two strands are made of other smaller strands. So you can put dubbing in between, of course, if you want. Now, uh, let me talk about other threads. You have UTC thread that I just shown you that looks like more like a floss. It's usually flat But it doesn't have to be flat Some threads like I just showed you this Vivas. It's more like a sorry. It's more like a round thread. It has its uh, Usage and then you have something like this. It's called floss so this one is 140 denier. It's good for creating underbodies. It lays flat, it creates less bulk, and it's good for smaller flies, it's good for if you want to put some material in between the strands. Now, there is something called GSP, so Semperfly Nano Silk, this is 30 denier. Uh, the thickness is super thin. I, they have actually something that's 24 odd, which I don't know how much is in the near, but nevertheless. So if you try to start this one, like with single wrap, it's okay, you can do it. But if you pull down, it unwinds. So because it's super slippery, it's useful to put some wax on this thread, or if the size of the fly allows you, just build a longer foundation around the hook and now you, as you can see like I can pull like crazy it won't unspin. Uh, the second uh, wrap I told you so this the single wrap will be this starting immediately going backwards for this thread I recommend doing this go a couple of wraps towards the hook eye and then just go backwards and you're done you're good to go. You can secure everything with super glue and continue tying your fly, but I don't do that, so I cannot say do it, guys. Now, now let me talk about the thread twist. Uh, when you use thread that is flat, or any thread, as a matter of fact, like after each wrap you introduce, your thread is going to twist once. So, as you advance backwards the thread will be more twisted maybe you can notice that now I'm going more slowly and now let me go backwards 
I'm gonna make a slight uh, spacing between wraps so you can notice that better so the, the, the thread is not laying flat anymore it creates those bumps because it's more rounded in shape now if you let your bobbin rest just hang freely down you will notice that the bobbin is starting to rotate counterclockwise if you watch it from above what this tells you is that in this manner you're going to untwist the thread so when the bobbin stops as you can see here it's already flat so when the bobbin stops like you can just continue with flat thread but you don't have to wait for this you can also just spin the bobbin counterclockwise watch the thread here as soon as it starts untwisting and laying flat here just start wrapping whatever you need to wrap so you get flat thread smooth body or underbody or whatever or you have round thread here and uh, not so smooth body now the difference between using the flat or not flat one is for example when you're pinching pinching materials on the top of the hook shank flat body flat sorry flat thread will create less um, pressure on the material because of the greater surface as opposed to let me spin this clockwise to make this round now you this thread looks thinner as you can see but the surface it adheres to the material that is going to pinch is less it's like smaller thus the the pressure is much larger so it's good to compress some materials and to cinch them down maybe a little bit better some softer materials for example and then after you cinch them down you, you can just untwist the thread and continue your tying as you want so personally I prefer to use those uh, non-corded non-braided threads like floss like threads UTC that's one of the best threads I know then nano silk uh, because it's very strong so uh, apart from these you have like Viva's uh, body quill it's still a thread it's not nearly as strong as other threads but this is just purely body material and it should be varnished after you finish your body now if you want to catch some materials on the hook you can do it just by wrapping like this but not all materials will just listen and obey what you want to do like this some materials the softer ones for example will tend to rotate around the hook so they will just try to run away from you in order to prevent that you can use pinch and loop so between pinch and loop like you try to create as little space between your fingers and your initial thread here like the one that's going to catch material so go with your materials and fingers close now with your forefinger and a thumb catch the thread and then go with the thread around the hook shank and place it exactly at the same spot as where you started and then just pinch and it will catch materials one more wrap and one in front and it's good now I didn't press hard so it's okay now the other method you can do is soft wrap soft wrap means that you go without like much pressure put this material a little bit towards you because the, the thread will just push it forward so you need to compensate and there it is so let me do that again push put the materials against the hook shank and then with soft turn go around the hook shank and increase like as you go around then increase the pressure and that's it now you can even do this on a in a better way now notice this this thread now is like obviously flat and when I try to do this like super soft it's going towards my hand so spin it just a little bit counter clockwise and look at this it's going against my against my fingers and then cinching down the material 
if you spin it con uh, if you spin it clockwise I'll just exaggerate now it's going to run away from you which is very very awkward if you're trying to catch something that's like short like short butt fans it's just gonna miss them every time so let me let me do this again spin your thread counterclockwise not too much and then the thread will go towards your fingers and you can catch your materials as you wish now for slippery materials there is a technique called angle wrap and I'll just do it right now I'll just slip those, snip those excess here now position materials at 45 degree angle compared to the hook hook shank and then just go with the thread over them and as you increase the tension those materials will actually align along the hook shank let me do this again I'll try to rotate the wise so position them at an angle do a soft one and then hop and it's going to be at an angle of course as you advance with your thread towards the rear end of the hook you can reposition and properly align whatever you need to tie on the hook shank now there is something that's very good for the ribbing materials so let's go I'll just introduce a little bit of twist here now sorry for this I'll try to show you something with a silver wire I don't have anything thicker right now so okay it doesn't have to be wire it can be quill it can be anything actually so it's called bottom wrap it's mainly good for ribs but you can use it as I said for quills for example so basically it's the same thing as with it here just you do it from the bottom part like so catch it and then go towards the hook eye and as you can see the first rep of your rib is going to be away from the tail tail is not here I mean but you can imagine so the first rep is going to be away from the tail so just over the body and just continue with ribbing now I know that I'm maybe asking a lot but some things just imagine and try to apply them the whole point of this video is going to to be not to tie a particular fly it's going to be how to implement certain techniques to improve your tying skills now there is something also called compensation wrap and you can partially see it at the uh, angle wrap that we just made because when you're tying and you're wrapping thread around the hook shank like so you're you're actually spinning materials around the hook so if you let me go a little bit towards the middle so if you place materials towards you and you catch them you can see that thread is pushing them okay at certain point it will catch it so it depends on the material quantity of material pressure involved when you're tying if the pressure is less then you can catch materials without too much rotation if you add too much pressure it's going to spin around so there is a lot that fine balance when you're catching materials so in order to compensate you put material in a certain position uh, allowing allowing uh, actually allowing the thread to rotate it a little bit so if you want your material to be on the top of the hook shank move it a little bit backwards so and catch it on the top let me do that again it's always good to catch your materials with the finger and thumb and to uh, manage them left right pinch them cinch them a little bit harder uh, everything has its own usage and it's uh, it's a matter of practice practice makes perfect for you for everything now let's just go a little bit let's tie some fly and apply all these things that we just had I will continue using the, the, the thread that 
you just saw here because if I use too thick thread you will actually see better and I'm not allowed to have too many reps so very simple this is too over too like too much for this fly but never never mind let's just tie a fly uh, fast so I'll just do everything from the beginning and I'll explain as I go everything so first of all I'm going to start the fly a little bit behind the hook eye I don't want to catch the hook eye because if you start your thread here and then you need to make a head it's going to be too much maybe I mean you will have some materials caught here so it's going to be a little bit bulkier so catch your uh, catch everything here around the place where you think you're going to add your last material so like this and notice how I use this tag end to slide down my thread so if my thread untwists too much I'll just twist it a little bit now because I'm going to finish off the fly very soon like the, the, the whole body now I want to show you something else twisting the thread I'll create a ribbing for this fly uh, I'll just add one more thing if you twist the thread too much you'll actually decrease the strength of the thread so don't do it too much now as you can see I'm implementing some ribs that are very visual and because I want to catch some materials here I'll just rest my bobbin and it will unspin in the counterclockwise direction while I'll take my materials so in this particular case I'm just gonna use partridge now usually I would use just pinch and loop so it would be like this pinch it, loop it, catch it and there it is material caught now I'll just spin a thread a little bit because it will create a little little more pressure and let me just show you with my nails you, it will cinch into the stem and it will actually uh, catch it much better than the flat kind of thread so I'll just do the compensation wrap as you can see cinch down and then one more here and I'll, I'll just untwist the thread that's okay one more here as you can see it's firmly into position catch the material I like to break it a little bit just to actually direct how I want I want it to wrap okay this is one full turn I need to go back a little bit because I didn't go properly okay this is second and this is where I go I where I'm going to catch my material so oops I'm too close to the hook eye okay this is it now I'll just go here as I said the thread is too thick so what I just did is not very desirable I pressed it a little bit backwards I'll do a whip finish knot one two three times this time because I don't want to go too much cut it close and I'll just find this tag end and I'm gonna remove it so I got nice orange and partridge wet fly like this now let's do the same thing with a different thread so the size of the thread matters as well I'll do the same size, everything, just a different color. So it's size 12 hook. Now let's do the 70 denier thread. Now here 
I'll just do the, the, the opposite thing that I just did there. I'll start at the eye of the, eye of the hook and I'll go towards the rear end. Now because you, you're using much thinner thread, I can actually allow myself to do more wraps because remember when you, we were doing one wrap with this, it covered body beautifully. When we went back with ribbing, it made everything well. So this is just one layer of thread plus ribbing. Now I just spun the thread uh, clockwise so you can see the ribbing and as you can see those ribs are almost invisible. So it's not possible to do it with this thread. You can actually do it if you implement, if you loop the thread here and just take that loop backwards, spin it and do the ribbing. But this is not important detail. You can add ribs later like whatever ribs you like even the the wire ribs so i'll just create a slight taper here and i'll do that by going back and forth so every time i go back i'll go slightly less than the previous time and that's how you create taper because i spun the thread listen it's round so i need to unspin it to get it flat so it will lay flat over the body and it will create nice and smooth transitions. It's way better to do this from time to time. So untwist the thread because as I said, every wrap creates twist in your thread. So if you don't want that, just do this from time to time. Now it's time to do cash mat uh, material again. So let's do the same material again. It's partridge, remove the fluff. Now, because this thread is obviously much weaker, because it's thinner, I cannot use as much pressure as before. So I'll just do the compensation wrap, as you saw it. A little bit more wraps here, because I can do it with this thread, and cut the excess. Now, because I'm using thinner thread, I'll go backwards, and I will see why. This is something I like to do with the soft hackles, especially if I'm tr uh, trying to catch trout. One, you can stroke it back. Two, that's more than plenty. Now, I'll go and spin clockwise my thread. If you have something heavy, it's very useful to hang it on your um, hackle pliers just to keep ten better tension between uh, this hackle and just to keep it under tension now I'll go with my thread through the hackle just to lock them a little bit more and a little bit better and when I reach the hook eye I'll just do two locking wraps sometimes it's breaks where it's supposed to break, sometimes it doesn't, but I'll just finish the fly and then I'll break this 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 tag end. Now you can manipulate your um, materials now with your fingers. So, uh, okay, now remember with orange thread I did three, whip, uh, three turn whip finish. With this one I'll just do one, two, three, four and as you can see, let's compare the heads. It's still smaller, so I can allow myself to do the second wrap. Second whip finish, sorry. And then cut everything close. Now you can, I can find this, you can pull it and break it. And there you go. You got your soft hackle that looks beautiful fishes beautifully and it's easy to tie uh, guys I hope you like this video it's not something fancy some too complicated fly but these basic tips will help you tie better flies and it will help you uh, to manipulate materials much easier now let's do a bonus tip and it's going to be about soft hackles uh, I'm going to use this 70 denier UTC 
and I'm going to start everything a little bit more backwards than usual and you will see why in a minute. So I'm just going to lay a thread foundation over here. I'm not going to bother going backwards for start. I just want to start my fly around somewhere here. So I want to catch my materials just about where I stopped my th thread right now. So this is for those situations when, when you don't have good uh, partridge hackle. So in this case, I'm going to use something that's pretty much oversized. I'm just going to try to find something oversized here. And yeah, this is going to work. So I'm going to strip away the, the, the barbells. So this hackle, as you can see, is like way oversized. And I'm going to just catch and align those tips as you can see here. So I just gonna, oops, slip it a little bit. So I'm, go, I'm gonna align those tips and catch them and take them away. Now I'll just take some more. Just let me do that away from the camera. So this is what I got. So a bundle of fibers. Now, because I'm going to catch materials here, I want them to be this long. So I remember this little spot here. This is where I want to catch them. So, the bare hook shank is because I want those materials to rotate. And I'm going to use moderate tension and I'm going to help it with my thumb and forefinger to distribute it all around the hook. As you can see, even the thread, as I was spinning it around, it helped me uh, to spin materials and distribute them along the hook shank. I'll, get, I'll just cut those tag ends a little bit, although you can use them to create slight taper, but if they're long enough. So this is it, I'm not gonna catch them and cut them too close. I'm gonna use them for taper, as I said. So nice touching turns are here as you can see the thread is still uh, untwisted which is good because it's laying flat that's exactly what I know what I want as I introduce more turns it becomes more twisted so I'm just gonna untwist it a little bit you can check it with a with your nail like this if you untwist the longer like you can pull down your bobbin and then untwist bigger portion it's going to untwist a larger portion of thread I'm just creating a little bit of taper which is more easily achieved with the untwisted thread than with twisted one now here you can uh, introduce a peacock curl if you want or some dubbing or whatever you want uh, just found a peacock curl so I'll just attach peacock here and I'm gonna spin this peacock here. I'm gonna spin it counterclockwise because it will introduce more wraps as I spin everything together. So I take thread, I take peacock together and I just spin them together here and that's more or less it. Catch it with one, two turns snip of the excess now press everything to towards the back and distribute if everything is not as you want it which probably will be the case but try to make them uh, as evenly distributed as you can when you can when you do that just stroke back all the fibers and transfer your front and thread to the front do a quick finish knot or two create this nice little head and that's it you got your fly so this is especially useful for flies which are like super small you can do this of course or if you like just run out of uh, partridge feathers or any other feather uh, for that matter so as you can see there is a slight gap here, I'm just going to man manipulate it a little bit more, that's it. 
I got my soft hackle and this is going to catch me fish so guys thank you, thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like consider subscribing and see you next week